itself is, you know, was it simply its astronomical importance that allowed Cygnus to remain so strong in the mindsets of people? Um, and this is where we start getting into very interesting areas because obviously when it first began to be worshipped, venerated, or seen as important mm. was in, during Paleolithic times. Uh, the very exact moment that people began to go into deep caves and perform religious ceremonies, generally in altered states of consciousness, yeah. um, pro most probably um, drug-induced, or certainly using some kind of, of, of trance state. Yeah. At such times, these people believed that they were in communication with supernatural intelligences, mm. um, and that they could achieve otherworldly wisdom and knowledge. Um, and this is the very time that they start depicting Cygnus on the walls for the first time. Mm. And I wondered what it was that made them think this, and why they should want to depict Cygnus deep in caves. Yeah. Um, and not just on the entrances, right in the deepest parts. And this is not just at, at, at Lascaux in southern France. Um, Michael Rappengluck, the professor at Munich, is, is working with, with more researchers who are looking into other caves and finding Cygnus. And I've looked into the only caves in, in Britain um, that have rock art and have found that in their deepest part are representations of, of birds, including the swan, and that I found that they are also aligned to the, um, to, 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 to the position on the horizon, on the meridian um, of Cygnus. Uh -huh. um, you know, so the tradition is, is here and was here in Britain you know, during a similar period of time. Uh -huh. now, so you know, there's something going on. And what is it? So I, I looked into caves, I looked into Cygnus, I looked into, you know, an, a, astronomy, a, astrophysics, just to see if there was anything yeah. that made sense. And then I struck on something which I simply could not ignore. And this was the fact that during the early 1980s, various underground particle detection facilities yeah. Um, around the world, in Europe and in the USA, suddenly began to um, register the disintegration of incoming particles, um, cosmic rays, yeah. which they had not expected. Now, what's important about these facilities is that they are sited generally in mines or beneath mountains, beneath, you know, sort of... Um, many hundreds of meters of rock yeah. um, and the reason why they are placed down there is to stop cosmic rays from affecting any of these exper experiments mm. um, so to find that there were cosmic rays reaching these depths um, was a mystery in itself yeah. but what was more interesting mm. is that they were giving off a kind of signature or fingerprint yeah. um, and that this fingerprint was easily detectable as having come from a binary system um, in the constellation of Cygnus, known as Cygnus X3, hmm. um, which is actually around 30,000 light years away from here, uh, which sounds a long way away, but it's actually inside our galaxy. Hmm. Um, and what Cygnus X3 is, is either a black hole or a neutron star, they're not sure which, hmm. which is orbiting around another uh, star, um, which it, it's drawing all of its power from, all of its um, energy. Yeah. And this is creating a huge disk of, 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 of plasma energy, hmm. which is producing these incredible beams hmm. of, um, of stellar debris that are shot out tens if not hundreds of um, light years, you know, huh. into the galaxy. 
And, uh, Andrew, are these the same as uh, gamma ray bursts? Um, gamma ray bursts are a part of this, but gamma rays are a lower energy level than cosmic rays themselves. Ah, okay. Cosmic rays are the highest known energies anywhere in the universe. Ah, okay. And um, astrophysicists still do not understand much about them other than to be able to determine their energy and whether they have mass um, and their, um, their velocity. Um, but as for their direction, it depends whether they are charged particles, which means that they are scrambled by the, the, the galaxy's gravitational field and that of our own solar system as well. Mm. And, and our, our own Earth as well, mm. um, the gravitational forces will, and the magnetic fields will, will basically send them going all over the place and you won't be able to tell where they come from. Oh, okay. but if they have, if they are neutral particles, they bypass all of this and are not affected by any fields at all. And, and, and they will go... hit the Earth and, well, so I want to say hit the Earth, and generally they will hit the atmosphere and, and be destroyed creating secondary particles which will then rain like showers down onto the earth uh -huh. but just occasionally cosmic rays can be so powerful that they will penetrate deep into the ground this is yeah. very very infrequent hmm. but what was happening in the 1980s is that this was occurring regularly and that the fingerprint quite clearly showed when i say fingerprint what i mean by this is that they had a so-called periodicity, a cycle of exactly 4.8 hours. The 4.8 hours um, was the exact um, orbit of the two binary objects in uh -huh. Cygnus X3 going around and around each uh -huh. other. This was known from the detection of other types of particles like X-rays, like um, radio um, uh -huh. emissions, um, and gamma rays themselves, oh. and infrared. Yeah. So it was known that this was a cycle, and no other stellar object has this same cycle. Plus, the cosmic rays were rising and falling in accordance with the appearance of Cygnus in the sky. Mm. In other words, they were at the, uh, their most strongest when Cygnus X3 was overhead, and when it was set, they would stop. Oh. Um, now, this also showed that they were not, these particles were not neutrinos. Neutrinos... Um, are emitted by you know stellar objects uh, um, in mostly um, supernova, yeah. you know exploding stars, but also the sun itself. Mm. Um, but these pass through the Earth and pass through us all the time without interacting with anything. Yeah. Um, and you know the, their direction is is very difficult to calculate. Yeah. Um, but with the particles coming from Cygnus X3, they were totally unique. They were penetrating, because they were so strong, their energy was so strong, penetrating hundreds of metres of rock. And these, these, um, these facilities, you know, which generally consisted of, you know, huge chambers of pure water, yeah. um, and the particles go through them. And what happens is that as they disintegrate, they give out a type of radiation known as Cherenkov radiation. Mm -hmm. And this is almost like a little light burst. Uh, and this can be registered by, you know, very sensitive photo equipment. Yeah. And yeah. this can register the presence, you know, within these, um, these, these chambers yeah. um, of the presence of the cosmic rays. And this is exactly what was happening. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was that. Now... What's interesting is that there was a great number of articles uh, written about these particles from Cygnus X3, which even gained their own name. They were known as Cygnets. Mm -hmm. Cygnets obviously being the name of, you know, baby swans. Yeah. <laughs> you know, after the fact that they were coming from, you know, the direction of the swan, the cosmic swan, the celestial swan, Cygnus. Yeah. yeah. And because they were just so strange so weird, other facilities that were not registering them for whatever reason, the type of rock, the distance from, you know, the, the surface or whatever, yeah. started to criticize.
criticise um, the reports of the other facilities, and there became a huge controversy surrounding them. Hmm. Uh,